All right, welcome back everybody. I'm Pete from ETI. We're back with some more fresh produce. Now we've filmed a whole bunch of comparison videos on our channel in the past. If you're interested in checking out some cyclocross tires, mountain bike grips, a couple of other items, look back on our channel to find those really cool comparisons. Um, our goal is always to uh, you know, show you some of the detail, maybe some measurements, and really get a close, up close view of these products that you might not get just in a catalog or on a screen. So uh, I'll try to move them around and flex as best as possible. Today we've got big time mountain bike tires. Uh, you know, I'm gonna focus primarily on the casing, uh, on the uh, tread patterns here today because that's the easiest to see. But keep in mind that all these tires come in a wide variety of different casings and rubber compounds that make a huge difference in how they're going to work and roll. So let's dive right into it. We're starting right off with a tire that's been around a long time. It's one of the most popular out there and everyone's seen this tire. I don't need to bring it out so you can see the tread, but I wanted to just start with this one kind of for a comparison to a lot of the others. Uh, many of you have ridden this tire, so it might be a good place to start so that you can look at the differences and similarities with others. So here we've got the Maxxis DHF. Um, this one happens to be in the double down casing, so it's pretty stiff, really good, uh, robust tire. It's going to help you with flats regarding that double down casing, but mostly we're looking at the tread. So keeping in mind that the blocks sort of run in, uh, along the tire this way, um, especially the sipes in, in through some of the uh, blocks as well, the center blocks run front to back on the tire. The idea with this is to give you excellent cornering traction. So the F and DHF stands for front. You can obviously run these front and rear, front or rear, but with the idea of this being a front tire, it's gonna give you excellent cornering traction. Now you can also see a pretty good gap between the center knobs and the outside knobs. This is gonna be something to look for in some other tires to help compare and uh, think about how these might roll on the trail. Finally, we've got an important L-shaped block on the side knob. So again, just compare this to some of the other tires as these are the kind of the key features that make this tire what it is. Again, starting out with something that most folks know, the Maxxis DHR2 tire. This one with the R standing a little more for the rear tire. It's got uh, sipes that run perpendicular to the tire. So we're gonna give you a little better braking traction with that rear. Now the corner knobs still do have uh, the side running front to back. You still need to use that rear tire to, to uh, turn as well, but a little bit more paddle shaped block overall. Um, so again, giving you power for pedaling, get our traction for pedaling power, and also that braking traction. We've got a little bit more of a ramp on these knobs for rolling or less in rolling resistance, but we'll see a lot more of that in some of the other tires we're gonna cover. So we're just starting with these DHF and DHR for comparison. Diving right in, here's a new tire that was launched this year with a, you know, quite a bit of fanfare. This is the Kenda Pinner. It's Aaron Gwynn's new tire. Um, and the marketing is saying this tire is aimed a little bit more at dry conditions. It sure does look a lot like the Maxxis, you know, and I think we won't see a huge deviation from this, but there's some really key differences to point out here. First of all, there is a continuous gap that runs all the way side to side on these tires. So the side knob is lined right up with the center knob all the way across the tire. If we compare that back to our DHF here, it's, it's sort of the opposite of that. So the side knob and then you have a gap before you hit the other side knob and the, uh, the center knobs are offset. Okay, so on the Kenda, they're all lined up. Aside from that, you do have sipes that run um, along the tread edge here and some smaller sipes that run perpendicular right in the, on uh, every other uh, center block. Now these blocks are really big and flat, should give you a lot of good stability on some of that drier terrain, maybe rocky stuff. A really interesting, cool tire brand new. Now Kenda has a pretty wide variety of tires. Here's another one called the Megalith. Um, this one's just a little bit more of an all-around tire, slightly smaller blocks and a little bit more of a transition block so there's not the same gap running continuously between uh, the center and the outer. There is a small transition knob. Um, some folks really like that as it, it does uh, make the tire feel a little more consistent from center to, to side knob. So 
check that out. We've got a little wider casing on this tire for that all around ride. All right, here we've got the Hutchin Hutchinson Griffiths tire. And I wanted to highlight this tire and well, actually the next one along right along with it. These are both called Hutchinson Griffiths tires, but we've got a 2.5 size and a 2.4 size. Even with the same name, they actually have a little different tread pattern. Uh, I think the idea with this is the 2.5 you're gonna run as a front tire and the 2.4 a little more as a rear tire. So with the 2.5, we have the, again, the kind of the front uh, idea. We've got the sipes running front to back on the tire, offering the best cornering traction. Um, that's both in the center and the side knobs. And there's a pretty good gap in between the center and side knobs as well, allowing that side knob to really dig in and grip hard. Um, but you'll maybe feel a little bit of that moment before it really digs in as you transition. These knobs are pretty big and square. Um, now, <clears throat> going over to the 2.4 tire, we can see that the knobs are sort of shaped the same, but the sipes are running side to side uh, instead of front to back. So again, with more of that idea of a rear tire giving, giving a little more braking traction. We also have some ramping on the knob, the center knobs on this one, hopefully lowering the rolling resistance. So again, even though this is the same name, Griffiths tire, the 2.5 with a little more front aim and the 2.4 with a little more rear. Moving right along, we have got the IRC Tonkin tires. And I wanted to highlight this one because while these, similar to the last set, have the same name in two different sizes, the tread is actually quite similar. We've got the IRC Tonkin in a 2.6 on the left, on my left, and the 2.3 uh, here on the right. Now, the tread look, looks pretty similar, but I will say the 2.6 is a lot larger volume overall in the tire, um, with the tread that's only a little bit wider. So pretty interesting that there's a big difference in size rating, but the tread isn't all that different. It really all comes from that tire casing overall. Now these tires happen to be a little bit lighter and more supple casing, so maybe a little bit better feel, but not quite as much protection, um, depending on what you need. There's a lot of good options out there. Next, we've got the E13 all-terrain tires. Now these either come in a TRS or an LG1 or an LG1EN. Now those titles are all really relating to the casing of the tire. The tread themselves are the same between all the all-terrain tires. Now, <clears throat> these are another tire that do have sipes that kind of run uh, alternating side to side and front to back. So you get some of the benefits of that uh, knob kind of smushing and conforming to the train in both directions, both when you're braking or cornering. Uh, they've got a pretty robust big side knob and um, a little narrower channel between the center and side knobs compared to some of the others. Now here we've got uh, Schwabi Hans Dampf. I wanted to highlight this one because it has one of the more unique treads of our bunch here. You know, a lot of the others had small differences. This tire has a knob that's rotated, rotated about 30 degrees in a diagonal. Um, and really just the, the pattern's different than all the others. That rotated angular knob is sort of sitting off to the side, so it's a little bit like a transition between the center and side knobs. Going to feel a little more consistent going from straight ahead to cornering. Um, but we do also have some horizontal sipes through many of the other knobs to give you really good braking and power uh, traction on this tire. I happen to grab a tan wall tire off our shelf today, but know that these tires come in a wide variety of both sidewall color and more importantly, uh, casings. Schwalbe just rolled out, I think, five new casings depending on the different treads. Um, you won't have every casing available in every tread, but kind of matching the idea or the point of each uh, tire tread. They also have a pretty wide variety of different rubber compounds. So you go from harder for a really fast rolling cross country tire all the way up to really soft for a more downhill, wet condition, aggressive tire. All right, so check out Schwalbe and those up upcoming new casings. Those will be rolling in all through the fall. All right, here we've got a couple of WTB tires. Now this is the WTB Verdict. This tire has really tall, kind of small knobs, so gonna dig into some soft terrain really well, whether that's wetter terrain or just dusty, blown out bike park stuff. This tire really digs in. These are some of the most tall, aggressive knobs of any tire we've talked about today. Something else to note, you know, a lot of the other brands out there have 
five casings like we mentioned for Schwalbe, a whole bunch of different rubber compounds. WTB keeps it a little more simple and just easier to understand. They've got a light or a slash uh, guard casing and then a heavy casing. And then they've got either a harder compound or a softer compound. That's it, there's not too much to understand. It just kind of, uh, do you want more protection or less or lighter weight? And do you want harder, more durable rubber versus softer, more grippy rubber? So if you get confused by all those other options out there, WTBs might be a nice way to just kind of keep things straight and make it simple. So they've also got the next tire here, the Judge. This tire, it does have some of the siping running both perpendicular and parallel to the tread. Uh, again, really tall knobs all around though, so you're getting a ton of traction out of this tire and a lot of support as well. You can see that side knob has support all the way down the casing of the tire, so it's not gonna flex too much uh, in a hard corner. So yeah, again, tall, tall lugs on this tire as well, and a little bit more of a gap between the center and side knobs here too. Now I wanted to wrap it up right back to Maxxis again, where we started. They launched two tires in the last couple of years that are really growing in popularity. First of all, the Asagai tire uh, was Greg Minar's creation. It combined a whole bunch of treads that he had liked throughout the past. And it's a tire that just looks really aggressive throughout. It looks a lot like kind of a combination between a DHF and a DHR. There have some big paddle blocks uh, with crossways uh, siping and a kind of classic DHF knob with siping front to back. On top of that, they added in a bunch of transition knobs so you don't have as big a gap between the center and side knobs. A ton of knobs on this and they're really well supported throughout. This is a ultra grippy tire and gaining a lot of popularity. And jumping right over to the brand new Dissector. This one was created by their athlete Troy Brosnan, or at least he worked on it a whole bunch. This is aimed a little more as a rear tire. It's got kind of much more paddle shaped uh, sort of braking traction, but also a lot of ramping to the center knob. So the idea being a fast rolling tire that still gets good braking traction. If any of these tires look like something you might want to see in person or might fit well on your bike, don't forget to check at your local bike shop, tell them BTI sent you, and you can always leave comments below. We'll try to answer as best as possible. Don't forget, we just talked about treads today, but there's all kinds of different combinations of casing, rubber compound that go along with all these treads, and a lot of times those will make the biggest difference in how well these tires suit your ride. Hope you have fun out there. See you next time.